Okay, now you've seen the title, so you know why you're here. Now let me dig in, tap into your energy, and tell you everything I know about this situation. Please do hit the like, please do hit the bell. The main messages that I'm getting straight away before I've even pulled the card is destiny. Destiny and the world. That means closing. Oh, wow, this is a big message. Whoever's engaging with the title and the image so far, this is a life-changing event. A life, I can feel it already. I'm getting a bit nauseous. Whoa, I feel like I'm traveling um, quite rapidly. Oh, whoa, hold on. Whoa, I'm spinning out a little bit here. Hold on, guys. Whoa, this is a lot. This is a lot for me to receive as a reader before I've even started. I feel a little bit anxious. I feel a little bit nauseous. This is the trans um, mutation energy that's coming in. Stay with me because I'm talking about massive increases in finances, massive increases in fo um, followers, viral traction, mad amounts of revenue coming in, a massive shift in your life, whatever it is, massive promotion. You're jumping loads of people in work. Oh my gosh, this, oh my gosh, it's getting me nervous. I think you're going to be really overwhelmed and shocked about what's about to happen in your life here. Look at this card staring at me. I haven't even fully shuffled it. Yep, you're alone right now. You're alone on your own right now and you've been up to something. You've been trapped in fear. You've been worried about what's going on. But there's a love in the back of your mind and there is absolute joy at the front of your mind. So there is still worry, yeah? When you're by yourself and you're in a weaker state and you've got to look at your shadow, which we all do every single day, there is no... 24 hours in the day where we're totally high flying we've got to wind down we've got to sleep we've got to reflect in those moments there's a bit of, a tiny bit of fear here fear here a little bit of worry is this going to happen am i going to do this can i really achieve this am i sure have i made all the right choices and decisions am i doing this accurately you're applying for something you've entered in for some kind of scholarship some kind of training program someone could be going off to the military here you you could be enlisting enrolling in something humongous now at the end of the day this is destined you can see this oh you've got a gorgeous third eye i don't say that lightly i've never said that before to anyone oh my god you've got a gorgeous third eye you <laughs> like the new world is so fun i've got to be real the way that everyone speaks it's like i just i'm here for it but i mean imagine someone comes up to you in the street right because they're all so clairvoyant and clear and true they go oh my god your third eye is gorgeous babe oh my god i've never seen a third eye like it that's exactly what i'm saying to you as a clairvoyant to another clear sentient being because you do have um skiffs, gifts and abilities you have been working on your chakras you do know about chakra healing and you do know about chakras that i don't talk about I focus on the seven, the one to the seven. I feel like you're trying to show off to me a little bit like, yeah, but you don't even talk about all the other chakras that exist. All right, all right, I know there's more. But I mean, I'm doing a lot of stuff over here. I'm channeling in many different ways. I haven't got t time to tap into all the other chakras. If you're running on over there about the air chakras, yeah, I know about the I know about the ear chakras. I do work with the air chakras. I do work with the chakras above the crown. I do work with the, with the chakras below the root. I'm not, I, I, I'm not confused. But we've got to do it. We've got to start off in stages, all right? So if you're, you're screaming at me, tell me more about chakras then, just other than the seven, so I can know that you're actually about it, hermatologist. Let me tell you, I'm about it. Been about it. Stay about it. All right? Let's not compete. Because <laughs> you will lose. I am a savage. <laughs> now I'm fighting and competing with the random collective over who's got better chakra knowledge. Chakra wars is coming, clearly. Okay, right, I love you guys. It is really fun to just have a silly laugh with you guys about stuff like this, right? Uh, let's talk a little bit more. There's truth coming out here, yeah, because you are really wise and you are incredibly smart. But let me challenge you then, darling. What are you doing with all your chakra knowledge? Because there's not a lot of people out there that talk about chakras in the way in which um, I do or use them in, in, in the right context and even know that they're actually called chakras, not chakras, but I'm from London, UK, and I've been taught in a really British context, so I say chakras. Yeah, my chakras are here, but it's really chakras. Yeah, I also know that. And I, I probably should do it right because it is disrespectful to the Hindi community. And actually, I am learning Sanskrit as well at this time. So I should be more respectful. It is chakras, not chakras. It's not an S. But I mean, we can, we can debate the, the little issues that um, niggle us in the um, spiritual community um, later on because there are a lot of things that also really do piss me off. And I value you for coming through with that energy today to check me about how I do speak and about what I do know, but I am incredibly wise and intuitive and intelligent, and I hope that you hit the like to, re to confirm that you know that to be true, otherwise you wouldn't be listening to me, right? 
And if you do have opinions and disagreements with the stuff, I do share it in the comments because I'm down for it. And I like to learn and I like to be challenged because that's the only way we can really evolve and be the best versions of who we are. And as a collective, grow and ascend because we can't grow on our own. Yeah, we can. Clearly you have. Clearly I have. But I mean, we do better when we come in together and we link up as a visca piscus and we continue to choose to evolve and ascend and share our knowledge and, and just kind of understand the nuances of how we speak and how they are conveyed in different ways amongst the community, yeah? I see you talking a lot about ear chakras and I don't speak about ear chakras at all but actually they're highly significant in regards to clear audience so I'm assuming that you're clear audience I think you're really good at hearing yeah clear sensing as well so whoever I'm connecting with you're very strong at clear sensing clear smelling right and then also clear hearing so you you smell a lot of stuff I don't even want to go in on the smell smell of vision reality imagine you can like oh it's my least favorite clear sense so I'll show Oh, so we can have some kind of context about um, the level of your gifts and abilities, right? Because you can smell disease, you can smell death, you can smell different illnesses, you can smell depression, you can smell lies and deceit. They are all real. They are all real things that give off a smell. I absolutely hate my gifts of smell. It makes me really, really low and depressed and I have a lot of psychic attack and I get really, really sick and I have to shower a lot, wash a lot, cleanse a lot. Sad Guru will off often talk about how important it is to have showers all the time when you get home and when you're around other people showering off. Even sometimes when I do heavy readings and transmissions just through Facebook or Zoom or have a heavy conversation on WhatsApp, I'll have to shower off afterwards just to get the energy off me, yeah? Even if I sage the environment, sometimes you need a cleansing shower to remove all of that and you've got to do spiritual visualizations of your chakras being cleansed and you washing off all of the soot off your chakras in the shower and watching it go down the drain and seeing your chakras return back to their purest form. You know, stuff like that is really, really important here for you because smelling energy, smelling lies, smelling depression, smelling ailments and illnesses and, and um, nasty vibrations of other people, it's the worst. I loved COVID isolation because I didn't have to smell anyone. It was so freeing. And then when I started to get back out into the real world and I started smelling people again, oh, it's worse for me because imagine we've had all this time off where I haven't had to smell anyone I lived with people and I saw obviously people in my bubble and stuff but um when I had to go out on the street I mean people were still like two meters away from me but the moment that they came any closer or even in the two meters and we're just in a queue two meters away I can still smell them because imagine your senses are so heightened now you've been away you've been in somewhat of a hermetic state you come out all your clear senses are heightened that's why so much more spiritualists are going to be born in the future and there's going to be so much a new wave of spirituality and so much more clear sentient beings because the period of time that we were in lockdown and isolation the energy really shifted us and made us all change so much and our smells are different now man any child that was born during born during isolation anyone birthed between 2020 end of 2019 i'll say until the end of 2021 my god the gifts coming out of those kids is crazy the clear sentient abilities that are in these kids that are born now from 2019 to 2021 they're a next era i'm scared of them mate you think non-binary and trans is a problem wait for these fuckers to grow up the isolation kids they are because the moment that you you're the uh, the egg hits the sperm the youth's created so i don't care what anyone else says to me right although they weren't born until we were out of lockdown that mother was going through isolation symptoms that mother was experiencing social distancing that mother was experiencing the fear-mongering news that was on the news and that fed into the offspring because i'm telling you i believe i am the way i am today because i know everything that was going on with my mum when she was in the womb and my dad when i was in the womb my dad's sperm my mum's egg they made me i can i can see in my head my dad my, my sperm and my mum's egg coming together and making me and then me sitting in my mum's womb here on my mum chat away and waffle on about a load of other shit and argue and do all the stuff that she done in her lifetime um, before I was even born that she thought was never going to affect me little did she know I was a little alien in her stomach receiving all of her trauma and all of her life experiences finding out the truth while I was in the womb then I came out of the womb thinking where the fuck is this place so that's exactly what's going to happen to all of these kids, all the isolation kids. They're not going to be star seeds or light workers. They're going to have some next psycho alien pronouns. That's what they're going to have. Just being honest. They're awesome. They're actually, they're, they're all majority already of them born, no offence. But they're out and they're aliens and they're all around us. And they're going to be doing some, they're going to be the first trillionaires on the planet then ones. Can't wait. 
Can't wait. Anyway, let's keep going. I must be connecting with someone who's got a trillionaire, trillionaire baby. Tri like, you know, we've got Gen Z. They're going to be like trillion Z Zen, trillion O one Zen P four nine six two Zeners. Yeah, the pronouns is going to be like Cuba, Cuba ra 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 manina, like proper Klingon. Yum, yum, yum. That's a, but like, what's your pronoun? No. <laughs> oh yeah, I wish I was fucking joking as well. I'm so deadly serious. No one even knows how the world's going to look in the future, and it's so sad. It's exciting for me because I know I'm excited, but it's like pronouns are now. They're like, what do you call yourself? No. They're like, what? <laughs> like the, the language is spoken speech is over like the world as we know it is no longer existing i already see it the isolation babies are already about out of the womb like some isolation babies are what three years old now like shit man once they get to four some of them like we're gonna have four-year-old greta thunberg so it's mad like that like i'm, I'm telling you 2024 you're gonna see the first four-year-old who is philosophizing at the age of einstein it's creepy as fuck Walking around with their briefcase and shoulder, heading off to fucking SpaceX to tell the to tell the world how it should be run. I mean, you're not gonna believe it. You're not gonna believe it. And their pronouns are. <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm doing this, guys. I don't know, but it's, it's hilarious and it's true at the same time. So fuck, you know, help us all. Right, intuition's out as well. Trust your intuition. I'm telling you some crazy shit, but it's real. I'm going to go on with another deck now because my energy's fresh. And I've accidentally hit pause twice now. And I feel like that's a divine saying, you're talking too fast, slow down. If I'm talking too fast, sometimes I feel like I am and I'm not. But my brain's racing as I get the intel. But you can always slow me down. There is an option on here to go t times one, times two, whatever, and reduce my speed. So if it's too fast for you, go back and reduce the time and then go back and watch it again, okay? But I hear you, let's go. Great fortune, family room. A lot of money coming in for your whole family, your whole lineage. We're talking about generational wealth here. Nice. Loads of cards coming out. Yeah, we're talking about child. Wow. Yeah, do you know what? Do you know that children can be potty trained by the age of one? Did you know that? Do you know that some people um, don't even use nappies from when their child or children are born? They put their child straight on the toilet. They get these special baby seats and they train their child from the, from the age that they can actually sit up. Um, by themselves unaided in a, or even in, like a, in one of those um, sit in high chairs right and um, they'll put their baby on the toilet and their baby won't even need nappies they'll just train their um, baby like you would a cat with a litter tray no offence I've got cats I love them they're my babies but you'll put them straight on the toilet yeah that's what's happening that's what's going to be happening now nappies will eventually because the nappies are not good for the ozone layer do you get what I mean? Nappies are not good for the world. Uh, it's just wasted. and it's Unless it's terry towel in nappies, which are even more disgusting, because if you don't know how to properly wash and clean and reuse a terry towel in nappy, then you've got some dirty, stinking material wrapped around your child's um, private area over and over again, giving them a range of irritation and giving off nasty smells to anyone who's got to receive it. Do you get what I mean? But the future is people, kids, training their kids straight on the toilet straight away. The, the institution, the education system, nurseries, they're going to have to learn to step up the level and program for that as well. Because imagine, I used to work in nurseries for years. Imagine you go to a nursery now and the parent comes in and goes, actually, my child doesn't have nappies. And they're not even one years old yet, but I just put them on the toilet. So you're going to have to learn to do what I do. Every couple of hours, you put them on there, they sit on the special seat that they have, and they go. You wait for them to go, and you talk to them and you encourage them. That's life. Level up. Come on. That's what it is. That's the same way you would, um, you don't put a nappy on a puppy, do you? You learn them, you train them. But our humans are lazy fuckers. So we're all out here using the... And um, same way the ph pharmaceutical industry needed to um, to get some money going and start a new industry. So did the nappy industry. We don't need it, really. Get your kids on the toilet from early. And, and we won't need any of this. Um, no offence to anyone who has kids. That's not a direct at you, I promise. But I'm seeing kids here. Also, kids can still speak way before. Way before. Way before they actually... The milestones say it in, um, like, the... Um, early years foundation stage children should be talking way earlier now i haven't even been into nurseries for years now and really work with them on a one-to-one -one like i used to i'll pop in and out of settings and stuff but i don't really um work on the floor like i used to in years so i can't even imagine the qual the quality of education and where kids are at now but i'm telling you now one year olds could speak clear as day yeah by the age of one potty training not shouldn't be a thing and then by the age of one also full blown communication you should eat. some kids can even be able to read by one and a half yeah like those kipper those um chip and biff books 
by one and a half, some kids will be can be able to read that. Especially the new isolation kids that I keep calling them now, which is really quite rude. I need to give them another name, but um, just so we're clear between me and you what I'm on about. Um, yeah, the world's changing. I have studied um, child development. That's my specialist and my um, expertise is rooted in child um, development. So I know what I'm talking about, just so you've got some credentials there from the back from me. And um, yeah, it's an exciting time for children. So don't, don't limit yourself to what you think you, your children can and can't know. Children can speak at six months. Children can be potty trained at eight months, I would say. Some younger than that, but I'll, I'll say eight months just to stay grounded in that. And then I'll say six months for the communication. And when my, my kids are coming out, they're going to be talking way too soon. Just because it's about how you role model behaviour. If you're going to the toilet all the time and you're carrying your children, I don't even agree with um, buggies and, that, and buggies as well. Carry a child. Carry a child. And then when they get to the age of crawling, make sure they've got space to crawl around freely and get into the position of walking. Encourage them as well. Once they've got the physical um, strengths and abilities, yeah, to stand, and it's not going to be impacting on them for standing, encourage them to stand for lengthy periods of time. Get them the obstacles and the parameters where they can bounce around in those standing kind of things. We've got to use our technologies a lot wiser. We can't have kids sitting around all the time. I was one of those babies that was sitting around all the time. You get your fucking back of your head squashed. Do you get what I mean? When you get flattered and all of those kind of symptoms at the back because your parent just slaps you in a fucking rocker all day, doesn't know what to do with you, doesn't benefit your growth. You get a flat ass and you get a flat fucking back. Yeah, no one wants flat back. So I hope to feel that hope for God's sake in 2023 and 2024, we can make sure that no one else is coming out needing a fucking helmet and flat back. Sometimes that's inherent. Sometimes you come out the wound and your brain doesn't quite get to where it needs to be or your, your skull doesn't quite expand right. But there are a range of people and kids coming out being put in rockers and seats there because the parents can't look after them properly and they haven't got the right apparatus and truthfully if children were nourished in the right way equally getting enough funding and abundance they could all be on the toilet pissing by themselves by the age of six and fucking reading by one and a half and speaking fluently by eight months no word of a lie go and google it go and type in all the stuff i've said there's proof out there there's kids that are doing it yeah, it's not just one or two kids either. It's a collective. Certain tools and experiences, some technology that's actually out now on the market. It also con like constantly produces excellent results of these kids. There's some technology that I've seen, and these kids are not even six months really, nearly at sentences. Yeah, one or two words, um, easily done. And when you look at the milestones and what's recommended for this milestones and age development, you're shocked because you're thinking, fucking hell, we've got kids over here, and this is I've seen this stuff since 2019. And these kids are fluent and it's new age tech that they're using, yeah? And it's the effort and time that the parents are spending with them and it's a dedication to the new age ways of development that are showing that this is possible, you right? 2024, we're going to see real changes in the world and it's going to be gorgeous. I'm stopping here as well, guys, because I'm not sure what we're doing actually now because now I've gone on a full-on spiritual... Um, uh, what's the word child development lecture i'm acting like i'm in a um, child development lesson giving out a lecture to everyone here about the future of fucking child development and actually how we need to awaken and evolve and start using new methods and mo methodologies and and um, not not keep relaying the um the the events of the past and start looking at the now moment and where things are going for children in the future all right let me pull one card because i feel like we've gone off grid here heart a heart ache and loss Okay, so there's some upset here, suffering in silence here, choose wisely here, passion and accelerated motion. Okay, so whatever I'm saying to you right now, there's a conversation that we've had today about child development, about a range of other things. I feel like there's something significant in our conversation that sat with you, and then it just kind of makes you feel a little bit defeated. Um, you're not sure if you've got the confidence to do this or move forward in your career or initiate some kind of ideas. The stuff I've suggested and proposed, not everyone will agree. People will shun me for it. Not everyone will believe in it. She's cuckoo. She's crazy. She's coming up with all these ideas. We can't prove it. It's not true. Welcome to the world of a researcher, an independent enthusiast believing in their own truth. That's what life is. That's what the spiritual journey is. Our unique ideologies grounded on our own research that we fucking have to work incredibly hard on to, not, to improve the hypothesis. We can't even prove a hypothesis nowadays, can we? We have to null. We have to nullify it to see what remains. So that's all we can do is keep going out there in this lifetime, believing in what we believe in, advocating for it, standing by it, connecting with other research and philosophers who believe in what we believe in, and then truly from there, follow the thread to some kind of partnership, some kind of alliance, some kind of, some kind of co-creation or sentiment or community group where we can share all these ideas and feel free to do so and see how it ripples out across space-time in the future. 
yeah now i feel like i'm talking to a lecturer a researcher a philosopher someone in the industry someone from the community someone from the collective of research and study and, and potentially in child development so if that is you big up yourself i really do value your contributions to the to the ecosystem of research it's really difficult to be in that sector as well. So much judgment and ridicule to be a researcher and follow the scientific thread and there's all these ethical principles and all these rules and stuff we have to follow. I'm really on a research thread now, stay with me. Because when I go back to research at the start of time and I think about the stuff that I've been taught in lectures, I feel like it's like by Wilson. Is it Wilson? One of the guys that, oh, is it, what's the baby where ethically now it would be totally wrong for them, them to do what they did with the baby with the mask on? And they were like, that would traumatise children now. We legally wouldn't be allowed to do this now. Well, lucky for me, as an independent researcher who sees the future and does the research that's, that, that's being done now, because we constantly get taught about all the research that wouldn't be done now, but that paved the way. That's where we're at in life. So there's a lot of research I do right now that in the future they're going to say, oh, Louisa Mander Allen created this. Nowadays that wouldn't be allowed. But in those days, it wasn't. There was no rules against it because it wasn't done. It's never been done before. It was, we, did, we never even stepped into this era. So when I work on child development philosophies and research around avatars and um, children online, and I love ideologies around like the bowl bowl doll and um, all of the um, different stuff about black dolls and white dolls and which dolls children pick, we're not doing any of that work in regards to um, avatars, emojis, filters, technology. We're all going into the metaverse. We're all going VR, AR. And guess what? No one's taking the fucking time out to, to wonder how individual differences are going to span up in, um, and affect the child's psychological well-being. Imagine a child who's... Who, uh, imagine a mum who gives her child an iPhone all day to play with filters on Snapchat, being a dog, being a cat, being all of these different characters. They spend all their time doing that. Imagine the dissociation they're going to get psychologically when they actually go and look in the mirror. And they're just like, Mom, no, I just want the phone back. Oh, my God, no, I don't look good without a filter. Adults struggle not putting a filter on their fucking filters when they post it on Instagram because they don't feel like they look beautiful enough. So imagine the poor kids out here whose parents don't even look after them properly because they're too busy, lazy, smoking fucking weed oh, on the doll. No offence, I don't want to stereotype. It's different for everyone. But there's a whole collective out there who don't look after their kids and throw them in front of a TV screen or, a, or an iPad or some filters or a game on Snapchat. And the child's staring at themselves all day as this avatar character using these filters imagine imagine that child's got no true concept of self when they look in the mirror they're gonna have absolute dissociation imagine how they're gonna grow up you think we've got anorexia bulimia all these healthcare conditions now what about the healthcare conditions in the future because of all this technology these kids are gonna be totally dissociated from themselves i not i've seen it with my own fucking eyes you rather have the filter on i look i don't look good without a filter mum. oh we'll put the filter back on oh i'm not a dog anymore i'm confused like like Children, and then you're going to wonder why we've got people out here identifying as um, aliens, identifying as um, hawks and animals and eagles, black people identifying as white people, white people could identify as Koreans, transgender communities, non-binary ideologies. You think that's a problem in today's society? We don't know how to frame or work our way around that. Imagine what we do when these kids start coming forward saying, I'm, mon I'm a monkey, I'm a dog, I'm a giraffe. And they're deadly fucking serious about it because they spent their fucking 10 years of their childhood wearing a giraffe or a dog filter on Snapchat and psychologically they can't break f f free of the, the association between the two. Real fucking issues. Real fucking issues. But once again, no one's talking about it. So while there's no rules and regulations in the ethical arena about doing research around these things, play the fucking field, mate. That's what I say. Go out there, do the research, research, be an independent, or share those ideologies, speak about it with others. Because, whoa, everyone's going to be like the hermitologist done this in 2024 and 2023. But nowadays, she would go to jail for it. Finally, there's an ethical principle. That stops this from happening. Like, sorry, I'm really sitting in a lecture now going back to the olden days. But I hope that finds a researcher out there who is involved in developmental psychology or any of those kind of fields that would really benefit from understanding where the world is going research-wise. Never done a reading that's gone this professional. But, I mean, that's nice for me because it's not always about being airy-fairy spiritual. It is about sharing what I know in different contexts. And I really do hope you found some love and light in that and some kind of empowering insight and thought about what the future could actually look like especially for our children you know love and light collective i'll be back soon with more